And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Please be seated. I'd like to share with you an article that I came across which embraces the essence of the message of what our gospel lesson today is preparing for the coming of the Lord and staying awake and focused on our mission. The article was written by Jonathan Sharp. Jonathan is from the Grand Canyon University School of Ministry and holds an MA in theology. The article starts out by helping us to connect how the writings of John Ronald Rural Tolkien helped to move a young C.S. Lewis toward a faith of Christianity through the lens of literature. Now, many of us may remember some of Tolkien's more popular writings, which were later turned into movies, giving him the license and the privilege of the title, The Father of Fantasy. Of those writings, The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings series are just some of those which are widely known. But just how did he use his writings to invoke such a deep yearning and stirring of the soul for deep religious experience in young Lewis? But more importantly, how might this encourage us to keep awake? Perhaps by showing him that we all thirst for imaginative stories not because we crave fantasy, but because we all want to better understand who we are and why we are here. Or perhaps it's because we are living within the true story of the world in which God is the author and we are his creation. The writer of this article, Jonathan, says that this true story of the world has more drama, action, wonder, and pearl than anything we could ever imagine through our human imagination. And that it is the true story that we are called to enter into with Christ and to continue to tell as his children. At least the heavens alone should have to declare his story on our behalf. How poetic that sounds. At least the heavens above should have to declare his story on our behalf if we do not tell it. Psalm 19, which we know so well, is a beautiful illustration of how the heavens above so eloquently speak the words of God. I encourage us all to read it maybe once or twice this week if you get a chance and, and if you'd like to experience more of that poetic expression through visualization. So then, how might we open the eyes of our neighbors today and draw them into that true story of the world and the wonder of God's reality, God's kingdom? How might we encourage them to keep awake and continue the mission as we await our Lord? Jonathan goes on to say that we've long relied on such practices as preaching and teaching and even apologetics to present the gospel. But as these approaches are important, they're not the only means of conveying God's story, nor are they equally or effective in every time and in every culture. As we look back on the life of C.S. Lewis, we find that he too later questioned this frontal approach of evangelism. 
it worked for him in Britain during World War I, but he thought there must be more. So in his later years, he's focused on storytelling as a means by which he might slip past those watchful dragons of secular culture. It leads me to wonder, how might our personal stories of God's love in our lives overcome that cultural dragon of spiritual doom? What if our stories might still allow us to awaken a sense of longing within our friends, within our families, enticing them into their first steps down the path of spiritual truth, even if their heads are not ready to go? Some of us are so wounded by the trauma that we've experienced in our lives. We need only look outside today and see what's going on on our streets, what's happening in our communities, that most of us have blanked out most of those stories in our lives, yet those stories are valuable. Yet we still need healing. The stories of God's redeeming love, a love so sweet and tender that it heals at the very thought of its presence. Those stories need to be told. Have you ever been healed by God? Have you ever told your story? We as Episcopalians have heard those stories of God's redeeming love from ordinary worship experiences as our liturgy, our word, our song, our Eucharist, and they've been very, very effective. So much so that our diocese has come up with a program through the Stevenson School of Ministry for developing lay worship leaders and preachers for mission and evangelism. Is everybody here aware of that? If the Spirit is calling you to preach and teach from a lay position, the diocese had made it possible for any of us to do that. You just need to reach out and tell somebody what the Spirit has laid on your heart. It's a program to help those who feel called to better prepare and share our stories and the stories of God's people. But Jonathan, the author of this article, says, we need to go beyond that. We need to go beyond what our tradition is as the needs of culture are changing. It's becoming harder and harder to reach those sheep in the wilderness. It appears that there's so much competition for the souls of God's children. Everything is now electronic. It seems like everyone's attention is directed to their phone. Jonathan says, might film and expressive uses of music be an untapped resource for Christians to slip past those resistant minds in a guarded culture and connect with them? I think the question here on the table is, how do we stay awake? How do we help others stay awake and keep focus on that which we are called to do as Christians? What vehicles are we comfortable using to stay fully awake and focused on God's mission for our children, his children? How can we tell the stories of a godly kingdom without worrying if they will be heard? Now, isn't that the reason why many of us don't want to tell our stories? We're afraid they won't be heard. After all, who will listen to me? Why is my story important? Everybody has a problem. Everybody's struggling. But everyone doesn't know about the redeeming love that God has had in our lives. They need that encouragement. Oh yeah, there's a risk. There's always a risk of not being heard. When Jesus told his parables, he seemed to trust that his father 
would further stir in the hearts of those who had ears to hear. For those who didn't, well, perhaps they will feel one day. Perhaps even they will taste the goodness of God. Today in filmmaking, we can likewise trust God to take those stories which we have committed to him and continue to work in the hearts of those who do have ears to hear long after the credits have rolled by. Is it possible that those Christian films and those Christian testimonies could actually sparkle with both the imagination and authenticity that would entice even the most watchful dragons to pursue the spirit of God at the center of such a narrative? If we as Christians begin to make films, share films, create music, share poetry, and develop art in whatever form it takes. Art which speaks of the experiences that are more closely resembled to the stories of Tolkien, Lewis, and most importantly, Jesus, where might such a wildly creative narrative approach take us? And how many people might still be awake when our Lord comes? Amen.